we should work together uh, to improve outcomes uh, and I think that uh, there are several treatable traits in uh, NTM lung disease patients that could be uh, addressed in order to improve quality of life and clinical outcomes. Uh, the clinical microbiology, uh, microbiologist uh, is crucial because we need to know exactly which kind of pathogen is affecting our uh, patients. Uh, we need to have uh, information about the sensitivity and resistance, uh, not only on zero time uh, diagnosis, but also during, uh, during uh, the uh, follow-up. Uh, the radiologist is very important, especially uh, when we should uh, uh, address complications of the disease. And I'm thinking, for example, a patient with hemoptysis and uh, who should undergo embolization. Uh, respiratory physiotherapist uh, in patients with bronchiectasis and NTM lung disease, uh, they clearly uh, can improve patient outcomes in terms of uh, decreasing exacerbation, improving, uh, decreasing cough, uh, decreasing daily sputum production. And if we have some etiological uh, uh, factors uh, of uh, NTM lung disease, for example, like um, an immune deficiency, primary or uh, secondary immunodeficiency, a clinical immunologist uh, uh, could help us in uh, uh, treating these patients and improving host defenses against the, uh, against the bacteria. Uh, we should not forget uh, the uh, ENT physicians uh, that, in my opinion, should be part of the uh, MDT uh, because uh, nose and lungs actually are considered just uh, one organ. So some of the patients, like PCD patients with NTM or uh, severe bronchiectasis patients with NTM lung disease, uh, treatment of ENT uh, issues is crucial to improve, uh, to improve their, uh, their outcomes uh, and uh, uh, quality of life. We are facing a large heterogeneity in patients with NTM lung disease. Uh, we might have patients who are more severe than, uh, than others uh, and we can identify some phenotypes within patients with NTM lung disease. First of all, comorbidities and aging are very important, not only for diagnosis, because for example, patients with chronic lung disease, having uh, daily sign and symptoms are difficult to be diagnosed with NTM lung disease. But also because when a patient, uh, in, in front of an elderly patient with comorbidities, uh, my treatment uh, uh, could be more difficult in terms of choice of antibiotic, in terms of compliance, in terms of drug-drug uh, interactions, in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of absorption of the drug. So I think that uh, comorbidities uh, should be uh, addressed in a patient with, in an elderly patient with NTM lung disease, and this is a special population. Then I work in an nodal CF center, so of course uh, the cystic fibrosis patients is one of the most challenging uh, population I, I see in my clinical practice. And these are um, difficult to treat uh, NTM lung disease because uh, uh, these uh, patients has um, a lot of uh, bacteria, fungi and mycobacterial infection. Uh, we have difficulties in identifying the, the uh, disease activity of NTM uh, in their lung. And of course, uh, these patients are taking a lot of medications. So uh, to start a treatment uh, is, uh, is a very uh, uh, challenging. Uh, finally, uh, of course, the immunosuppressed patients, uh, not only for lung disease, but also for uh, uh, other organs uh, uh, which might be affected by NTM and for disseminated disease. And uh, the infection disease specialist uh, plays, of course, a crucial role within the multidisciplinary team. So I think that uh, there are uh, several uh, populations of patients uh, that uh, deserve uh, a special attention, uh, not specifically, not only specifically to address the NTM lung disease infection, but also to, uh, to uh, fix uh, uh, several other uh, comorbidities or, um, let's say, host-related factors that might still affect uh, their outcomes.